Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our IPM series, today we are going to look into different uh, alternate options of the running the test cases into the cloud platforms like browser stack, right? So, so far, whatever the test cases that we have designed, that we have uh, executed that locally, either it is on Android or iOS, we were running that on our simulators, right? Now, it is not always uh, like a, uh, reliable to always run into your local machine because with uh, increasing the number of test cases, your system has to be ideal to kind of run on those uh, uh, simulators, right? Local simulators. Uh, if you want to go for a real devices, then you have to purchase the real devices of different versions, different sizes, and which would be like a uh, not a cost effective, right? So that's why like there are different cloud solutions or services that are available where they maintain different aspects of your uh, infrastructure like uh, they help you to run the rpm server you don't need to maintain the rpm server you don't need to maintain all the different versions different os or different models of the real devices from both android and ios side right so that is why normally big organizations or where your test cases are increasing more that time it is better to opt for the cloud services now there are a lot of cloud services as there like has been like you have a browser stack you have source labs but pretty much everybody have the same uh, same way of executing the test cases they give you a lot of capabilities that you can utilize to run your test cases into their platform actually there so today we are going to see how we can set up or what are the different prerequisites to run our test cases into the browser stack okay so for this uh, as you can see there are different versions different licenses first let's try to understand that from more into the application or ipm perspective now you can see there are like web testing if you want to go for a web browser like there is a automate you can automate the web browsers like selenium webdriver io and all these things live is nothing but like you can you can in live or on the live uh, platform you can just take any of the browser and you can launch your url the same thing we have something called as app testing which is for your mobile apps the same thing app life for your manual testing if somebody want to do manual testing like accessibility or like responsiveness they can use this particular licensing there app automate it's basically where you can execute your test cases with the different tools they're supporting like your appium or like uh, ctest any other similar platforms which uh, deals with the mobile app automation testing they go with that okay so pricing you can see that but for your trial they give you 100 minutes of testing for each of these licenses so it is a good amount of time where you can execute your test cases there now for me uh, at this moment i am going for a free tire so i will say get started free and then you have to log in I have already logged in so that's why it is coming in this and you can see like if you go to the dashboard and you can see here so these are the different types of platforms they are supporting actually so uh, Appium, Node.js, C Sharp, PHP and all these things right so this is with respect to the Appium actually so you can see there are a lot of different bindings are there right so with respect to the language binding and their unit testing framework right like for Java we have test ng node.js we have webdriver io because webdriver io also helps you to automate your mobile applications right the same thing if you are using python you can use the pytest your automation testing framework actually there so at this moment Moment, I'll go for test ng but today I'm not going to really go in detail about the setup or configurations of the framework to execute your test cases into their platform right because there are a couple of things that you need to understand about the cloud services especially for browser stack okay so the first thing is that you have to understand how the browser how your framework will understand w w the credentials of the browser stack right so that it can go inside the platform there so for that you can see there is something called as access key as soon as you log into the browser stack they will be allocated with username and there will be an access key actually there username and access key you have to keep this safe which will identify the browser stack credentials you can say in this way 
like how you are logging into an application right okay and the second uh, most important thing is that you need the mobile applications right like in your local simulators what we used to do so we used to install the dot app file for your ios simulators for your uh, android devices we used to install the apks right so the same thing there is a upload app feature in browser stack where you can upload the dot apk file and dot ipa file as well there also they provide you some of the rest api services as well where you can upload by using the path of those applications uh, the mobile apps from your local system and then they will give you a key actually there how they were give they are giving you this access key right the same thing they will give you one uh, string or kind of a key actually which you need to keep it safe for your local executions what we used to do like if i go inside this right app factory so we used to give the appium path normally appium path or set app package and app activity right or else you can say set app and you have to give the path of that particular application right or the dot apk or dot ipa file the same thing here instead of the path you can give the key which you will be getting so today we will be focusing into how we can upload the applications into the browser stack platform okay so as i told there are two different ways one is actually you can look into this and you can execute that like for an instance i can go here and you can see i can either choose the dot apk or dot ipa file as simple as that you just need to open it and it uploads that particular file and it will give you an key actually so let me show you that so let me just install this and uh, redirect to this Let's say I'm installing this APK file. Okay, and you can see that it gives you a kind of BS colon double slash some key actually you, it is giving. So you have to key, copy paste this particular file into uh, somewhere actually this particular string. Okay the same like as i told how you have been installed or uploaded this apk file or ipa file right you can also go with the so the rest api let me show you that so you can see app upload to browser stack so i have couple of uh, information i've captured here for each of the use and which you can refer it like for an instance like you have to use the curl command so curl is kind of a command actually or a utility command utility which you can uh, use this curl command to run any any api call normally apis we are executing in postman or in any automation testing right so the same thing your simple command prompt into your windows or in mac terminal you can execute this it is a by default use uh, this curl command is available for mac if not you can just go to the curl utility and you can install that so what do you need to do curl space hyphen u the username and key which i have shown you as soon as you log in you will get that then you have to say uh, hyphen x x is nothing but which http method you need to use it we have to use for post because we are creating an entity right inside the resource inside the application and you have to use this api call api hyphen cloud browser stack slash app automate is the license underscore or uh, sorry slash upload upload is the feature where you can upload that particular file in fact when i clicked in this upload uh, button right that time this particular command executed internally upon clicking on that up upload hyphen f f is nothing but which file you need to give and i have to provide the ipa or the dot apk file from my local system directory and then here there are a couple of other options they are giving one option is that hyphen f are nothing but different options right so you can give even a custom id see it was giving you like this uh, bs uh, colon underscore or double slash this string right sometimes it is hard to remember so you can give some naming convention to this particular upload also so that is nothing but custom id even when you are setting up in this set app right options dot set app you can also give that particular name of that or the sort name that you have given this custom id any name you can give that 
see this hyphen f file is normally coming from your local system right let's say you don't want to download those apk and ipa files you want to you have some somewhere located let's say you are using app center or you are using any google uh, drive or anything some private location also in your uh, organization right you want to directly get that from that particular location there some remote location let's say so you can simply say hyphen f url and equal to you have to give this particular path it's an example actually browser stack is giving you can also provide this so the instead of this local file path right you can give this particular path okay so when you are giving this custom id right so you will get in response like how we have got here right this particular response we have got the same thing on that api call you will be getting that as well app url that is nothing but the ps colon double slash that string which we can use into the set app activity set app capabilities custom id which you have stored into this when you are giving custom id right it will give also a shareable id as well now what is this shareable id let's say you have a license organization level license now not every team member need to upload the same application right if the same application want to use across different team members right they can simply go for the example user let's say you have a xyg organization so xyg slash this particular custom id it will give this id as well so instead of the set i app uh, options instead of this string you can either use this custom id or you can use this let's say one of your team member uploaded this particular ipa file they gave you this particular organization slash this particular name you don't need to re-upload the same file because a browser stack will store into your organization account into the browser stack where all the apps you can be shared it across the team members so that is one of the benefit of that as well okay fine then now if you see in this ui right i don't have any option to see what files i have already uploaded now in fact actually if you see that this particular file i have already uploaded to the browser stack platform but still it is accepting the same thing so i don't want to repeatedly upload that right so for that actually the browser stacks gives you an option where you can also see what are the recent applications you have uploaded it now let me show you that now because i have uploaded here by using the ui i'm not going to show how this is going to happen i've shown you the response here but let me try to show you the recent applications that we have uploaded so far so i'll go to the terminal in my Mac, you can also go to your command prompt of your Windows uh, command prompt as well. Now here, I need to give this particular key actually here. So you can see this is my username and key that I'm using and I will use the same recent apps. And you can see it gives me a response of this actually here. Let me copy paste this into the sublime text so that we can see in a very clear way okay so here if you see that it gives you a couple of records actually here let me format it so that you guys can understand that and you can see a total of three different files that i have uploaded so far one is this apk file which gives me the app version app url you can see this is my app string right app id it is giving the same thing i have uploaded one ipa file the same thing i have uploaded one apk file so three different file for files i have uploaded i think it gives you also uh, if you are uploading the same file again it will show you that it is already uploaded let me try that so upload another app i'm also uploading the same file again let's see what error it is giving okay probably it gives me the same browser stack uh, what you call id only it is not really telling me that it is already uploaded now let's see how many entries it is coming so i will again run the same thing and i think uh, one and then two and then three so it just gives me the uh, what you call the id of that it doesn't really give me a new id or it doesn't really uh, 
create a copy of that so that's good actually there okay fine then so like this you will be getting a response actually uh, even they give an option of deleting that as well okay so now let's try to delete this particular app by using this particular command right so i'll copy paste this one this call command open the terminal and then instead of this user uh, app id right so let me go to this sublime text and i will copy this particular app id and paste it here and then also i have to give this particular username key right so let me go there okay and then let me enter it okay it should be call hyphen u actually space you need to give and you can see there is a success u is coming now if i go for the recent apps right i should get only two instances you can see app name and app name so there are only two instances of the app is coming so like this you can do now you can also upload another file like this you can use this call command to upload a new application like that you can deal with it and this api documentation is already there into this let me also show you that into this now you can see that you can go to the documentation api appium api and here you can see upload an application what are the different call commands they are using list of upload applications for a group actually there uh, delete an application you can see the same thing actually we were just running it with different options there i just kept all these things for a handy purpose so you can also refer to this as well here so like that you can deal with the file upload delete and then getting all the recent applications which is very essential to automate your test cases because that is the prerequisite right okay so that is pretty much it for today i hope this session is helpful in our upcoming sessions we will see how we can also do some configuration changes or some code changes to our framework so that we can run the test cases into the browser stack rather than into our local devices okay so stay tuned and do subscribe to this youtube channel thank you for watching